we're here. The first episode of the podcast. So this is going to be the Ecom Boss podcast and it's going to obviously be uncut. So I'm not going to talk. I'm not going to cut everything that I say, just like you heard right there. But on this podcast, we're going to upload like once or twice a week and we're going to talk about entrepreneur stuff. Young people that wants to be an entrepreneur, everything like that. We're going to talk motivation, maybe ways of making money online. I'm also going to tell you guys a couple of weird stories that I've been I've seen it like lately had a lot of people in my DMs. So you're probably going to laugh a lot on this podcast as well. And we're also going to go over some DMs. I'm going to answer you guys this question. So today I asked for um, some questions on my phone, on my phone right now, actually trying to find those questions um, that I'll be showing you guys here in a second. But what I want you guys to do with this podcast is honestly just to listen to it. I don't expect you guys to take it too serious. And I also don't, you know, want you guys to just sit here and watch me. I want you guys to listen to it. And I'm sure you guys are going to learn a lot because I started out once as well. And now we're having a podcast. And I'll probably shift the camera over to the webcam later just because I have an issue on my camera. Like the camera cannot record for more than eight minutes in order to be uploaded to the PC. If the video is longer than seven, eight minutes, I can't upload it to the PC. So you got to do some parts on the webcam too. But hopefully you guys are just listening to it while just playing a game or driving, I guess. But if we had a lot of questions here. Not a lot, but we have some questions. So the first guy says, um, let me see which one is good. <laughs> you got more girls when you got the big bank. I'll, maybe I'll do that as the second one. Um, let's start off with how did you, uh, do you plan on doing stocks or real estate as another hustle? Let's start with that. We'll get the juicy questions later. So it just gets more exciting for every minute. Honestly, let's start off with the, the boring ones. Um, I'm not saying any one of them are really boring though. Of course, I'm not really planning on getting into stocks. I'll be completely honest. I don't see myself doing stocks, but I will definitely try it out. It could be funny, but I don't know if I'll ever get into stocks heavily. Um, I've heard something about like you get, you can maximum make like, 20% back of your stocks, uh, like Warren Buffett said or something. I don't know if this guy is lying. Um, I'm not talking Warren Buffett, but someone talked about this. I don't know if he's lying, but for me, I'm not really that interested in like getting a return, even though it could, let's just say it's 20%. Let's just say it's 20% and let's just say it's good. Honestly, it's not really my style. I'd rather get the check. I'd rather get the money. I'd rather scale the ads. You guys know what I mean. Find out way funnier and just investing money into that. Maybe building a personal brand. Maybe definitely investing into real estate later. Um, as uh, he asked me about. But stocks, being honest, I and I might be saying a lot of weird stuff because I don't know too much about stocks. I'm just saying what I've heard, right? I'm, I'm not an expert in stocks in any shape or form. But it's not my interest. I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in getting the check. That's, what, that's like what I think is cool. But real estate, I think it is really cool though because it looks like something i could enjoy and something that is funny so real estate to definitely get into the real estate business but stocks i'm gonna be honest i don't think i will get into stocks and i know a lot of people in comments probably gonna tell me to do it but i don't want to i don't want to when, like there, and there's so many people i know doing stocks i never hear about them really breaking through but that doesn't mean i can't do it that doesn't mean anybody else can't do it if they're all in of course but for me not too interested i'm gonna be honest i'm not too interested in it I'm drinking some tea today. I drink that every day. <clears throat> so, before we get into the next question, I want to get you guys to like this podcast. Click a thumbs up and like. I'm going to try to keep it over an hour. Um, how did you get a mindset? How to get a mindset of working again after multiple product fails? So, this is honestly not a dropshipping podcast. So, I'm going to take it more like uh, just as a failure, not necessarily um, product failure. The thing is, if you cannot stay motivated and keep going after a failure, I would just say you're not meant for the game. And I know that sounds really boring. You would have like the hack to be motivated. But the thing is, when you're asking how to get motivated, you're probably in a bad spot in terms of the motivation. Is this something for you? Which it can be because I used to ask it myself. But honest truth is consistency creates motivation. If you want to be motivated, you need to be consistent. So the best way for you to stay motivated is by doing. So look at this scenario. I was not doing anything. I was not really doing too much the past three weeks. You guys probably saw it on a YouTube channel. I honestly had a pretty bad time. I didn't feel too good. Now I'm feeling pretty good. I'm actually feeling really good at this point. So now this is not a problem anymore. But listen to this. So I was not really feeling too well for like two weeks and I was just wasting my time, honestly, not doing too much productive. But I, I guess I was probably a little burnt out too, honestly. But I've seen this happening with me. Like I'm, I'm not really different from you, you guys. Um, 
but I happen to have some success in my field, that's for sure. Um, but I struggle a lot with motivation too, but I just realized motivation comes by taking action. If you want to be motivated, take action. Because the thing is, last day or yesterday was actually the day I was back on again, feeling motivated again. And I've still been working the other days, but really low effort, you know, and definitely not enough. But th to yesterday, I just felt decent. And listen to this, listen to this. So when I got up in the morning yesterday, I went straight to work. We're really vulnerable in the morning, which means, you know, whatever we see is kind of what we're going to do. If we start off the day playing video games, the day is going to be not really that productive. It's almost guaranteed. So I started off the day by working, started off doing a task, a hard task, and then I got into some easier tasks. And then one guy was asking me on the live stream, how many hours do you work a day? And I was, I was supposed to say like four to eight. But then I just realized I've been sitting here working for 14 hours. So... That was really weird. I just realized that. Yo, I've actually been working for 14 hours. Maybe I should go to bed. And then I went to bed right after. So end of the day, it's like 15 hour work day. And that is how you stay motivated. Because you just do a task, you do a new one. Motivation comes by doing. And guess what, how I felt when I wake, woke up today? When I woke up today, I felt hella motivated. I just felt like I was going to crush today because um, I put in the effort yesterday. So that just goes to show motivation comes by doing. And just just another clear example of it. If you do things, you will feel motivated. And just discipline creates motivation. Motivation is not really a thing, I would almost say. You, do, you, you stay disciplined, motivation will hit you. It will just keep you going. Discipline keeps you going. Motivation might get you started, right? So that's how I stay motivated. I just take action. It really is that simple. If you, if you just stay on it, you'll get sparks of motivation all the time. It really is the truth. Um, but yeah, if you really feel like you're relying on motivation, motivation videos and something, I don't look at that as a bad thing necessarily, but being honest, I don't really think it's that smart and I don't know if you meant for it. But I used to rely on it a little when I was starting out and I made it work. How did your friends and family react to your success? Interesting question. Um, to be honest with you, uh, I don't uh, I don't really remember too much. Um, I think they didn't believe in it too much even though the money was coming in which is quite funny uh hold up a sec here i'm just gonna fix the mic oh i should never touch that um i don't think they really believed in it in the beginning which is quite funny as i told you guys even though the money was coming in i think they yeah they probably didn't believe in it and my grandma i think she thought i was like a scammer or something or that i was selling drugs i don't know something like that eventually she figured out it was legit um but they, they were, they, I don't know, I kind of led up to the point. I was like showing hints of it all the time that this is what I was going to do. So I don't know if they were really surprised. I dropped out of school, of college. And I'm not saying that to be cool. It's not, doesn't really, it's not really that cool to do it. But uh, I thought it would help me. Um, so I did that. Luckily, it worked out. I mean, it's not luck. It was because I just put in the effort. Um, so yeah, that is, that's about it. But, um, they didn't, I don't know, to be honest with you, it's a really hard question to re to react, to answer, but I know that they were definitely a little bit shocked once the numbers come in. Um, I think there was a couple of smiles, you know, there was nothing crazy. I think they expected it of me. I think I just gave off the vibe, like I'm going to make this work. And I think I made it so clear for them too, that I, this will work for me. So they, I actually convinced them, I guess. Um, my girlfriend, she, she was also thought it was cool. That's for sure. But one thing, uh, we can get into the friends. That is a little bit more of an interesting story, how they reacted. Um, but, um, the thing is I were getting like small checks every once in a while from the internet. I'll be making some small money, like let's say a couple of hundred dollars. So honestly, it just started off small and built higher. So if it's gradually over time, it just increased a little bit all the time. How shocked will you really be? You're like, Yo, I made three hundred dollars last week. Now I made five hundred. Who's gonna be shocked? And then I made seven hundred. Okay, they're used to seven hundred. Why are they gonna be shocked when you hit eight hundred? You know what I mean? It will just increase like that. So you gotta really change overnight, almost massively, for people to honestly be shocked and react. But they think it's cool. And my my dad, especially, he I think he is really proud. It really sounds like that. He's definitely proud of what and what I made and accomplished. Because he was scared when I dropped out of school. But now he's he's definitely pretty proud about it. And that is cool. He talks about it all the time, actually. So I think he's really happy. He's proud of it, which obviously you could look at that as one of the goals, maybe to make your parents proud, I guess. Um, at least I was able to do that. But I'm just looking at this as a beginning. It's going to go way further really soon. My friends, however, um, there's been a lot of people from, say, like high school hitting me up now. Um, it's happening all the time. And they obviously expect stuff, um, which I can't give them. A friend of mine, a friend, I don't know if I'll call it a friend, but let's say that I have a friend of mine who asks me, 
I guess like once every second week, like twice a month, he asked me if he can get like $60 to buy clothing. Uh, and he's like, I'll pay it back. And they're just like, and, and they even say like, just because you're so rich, which first of all, I don't consider myself as being rich. I'm, I'm definitely, I'm well off, I guess that's how you say it. I, I do well for myself, but I don't consider myself as rich. Um, so I don't take that as a compliment either, to be honest with you guys. But asking about that, just because I have, a, I have some more money, I find that to be not too interesting. Then I'm like turned off of that person already. Like we, we, we might not even be friends anymore at that point, unless it's like we're buying, like it's a really close friend of mine and I'm like nice to buy him something because I'm a nice guy. That's something different, right? But when they straight up ask for it over a message, like, yo, can you give me $50 for clothing? Like that's probably the wrong way of going about it. So I'm not interested about that. And I had a lot of people wanting to get into drop shipping to get into the businesses I'm into from high school, um, who asked me questions all the time. It's honestly, I don't know. Like, it was a little bit cool the first time, too, because there were some people that, some bad people, like some arrogant people that's obviously nothing, thinking they're everything, um, realizing that I'm more than them. And they, I don't mean that I'm more than them. Look look at this. Listen up. I'm not more than any of them, but they, they think so. They would think that I am. But I'm not, obviously. I'm just like you guys. But the arrogant people now look up to me. The arrogant people who think they're the best now think I'm the best. You guys get where I'm going? And I'm not saying that I'm the best, but you guys already know that because I'm, uh, I guess I'm pretty down to earth. I don't think that at all. I think I'm just like everyone else, but I do some, some cool stuff every once in a while. You know what I mean? Um, but that's funny, you know, when the arrogant people who always know the best now actually look up to me and ask me questions, but then they expect like, this is the weirdest, like, can I come over to your place to do some drop shipping? And the funniest part is, you, let's say you could do that. How would I be interested in helping you if I tell you, okay, you can come over. And I don't do this, by the way. I don't let people over like that. But let's say I tell them like, yo, you can come over if you make a store. If you find 10 products, if you just, if you get started, for those who don't know what drop shipping is. If you get started, you can come over. They come over and they didn't even get started. And then I help them. And then two weeks later, they still ask questions. If I don't, re if I don't reply to them, they're in the same case. They didn't make any changes. So like that, I just, that's the bad part. Like they completely rely on me. And that's usually what happens when you help people, you know. So two weeks, let's just say you go ghost on them. You give them like, you give them a lot of info. You meet up with them, you help them. You coach them like for a day or something for some hours. And like help them a lot on doing this, help them a lot on that, Facebook ads, whatever. And then you go ghost on them on purpose to see what happens within two weeks. In two weeks, they're in the exa exact same place. Because they depend on you. So you went ghost them. So you really wasted your time helping them. Because when you help someone from the beginning like that, who doesn't even do his research, which is pretty common, they, they're they not going to make it work. It's the truth. And they'll be at that same place, you know, a couple of weeks later. It's not too cool. Is it hard to concentrate on goals? It might be hard to concentrate on goals. I even feel it myself. Of, I struggle with laziness a lot too, to be honest with you guys. But I always, I always make it work. I always make it work. And I always make the numbers match up and look good in the end of the month somehow um but i would say i'm pretty dedicated as well but hard to concentrate on goals i feel like if you're driven it should not be hard to concentrate on goals the problem you can have is like being all over the place you always look into new ways of making money like last week you did drop shipping now you're doing sma smma and the next month you're doing some youtube business like that's then it's going to be hard to focus i think it's up to you if you're all over the place of course it's going to be hard to focus or concentrate on a goal but as long as you have the end goal and you focus on one thing you guys need to focus on one thing if you haven't made that work why would you jump from stocks to drop shipping to youtube to smma if you never made one of them work that's like it, it that's an everlasting circle that would honestly just bring depression at a certain point so don't get into that like you need to as i told you guys just focus on one thing once that thing worked you get into something else. I focus on drop shipping and I made a lot, a lot of money from drop shipping. And then I transition into something else I want, personal branding. And then I'm going to transition into real estate. But I do one thing at a time, or at least one thing pretty successful before I move on to it. I'm not finishing it, but I do it successful first. Um, so you get a lot of drop shipping questions. I'm actually going to check if anyone of these are good. Which uh, payment providers do you use? And I use Stripe and PayPal. I use Stripe and PayPal. Talk about some new formats, uh, bro. When is the course coming? The course is made. Please check DM. Yeah, and then I even posted. Don't ask me dropshipping questions, and I'm not mad at anyone. Of course, don't don't get me wrong. But I also asked like non dropshipping questions. There was one with dropshipping, this one without dropshipping, and still right there, people also ask dropshipping questions. You get more girls now that you got big bank. Hell yeah, <laughs> I could get more girls if I wanted to. I'm pretty confident I could.
Let's be honest. I could probably get way more girls, but that's not my focus. I'll straight up ignore that. Like I have no focus on that whatsoever. There'd probably be a lot of fake ones too. Um, if I connect with cool people, I'll be glad to stay in touch with them. But that's about it. Yeah, no. Nah. I think if I wanted to do that, I could definitely pull it off. Um, but it's I'm not interested in that at all. Probably be a lot of fakes, and I already have a girlfriend, so it's not really a need for that. But yeah, I, I can actually see that changing a little bit. I don't have any particular stories, but I can see it a little bit. I've been getting some messages, but nothing crazy. Um, but yeah, I'm not that place. Like, that's not where I am. I'm not where they are. They will not really be able to connect with me too much. Let's just see what I'm posting on Instagram. Um, another question. Just thank you for sharing. Thank you, Carla, for saying that. I appreciate that. That's nice. Um, I'm definitely going to keep it up. Because at the end of the day, I just want to help you guys out. That's why I do this thing, right? It, it's a, it's enormous for fulfillment for me as well, helping other people out. It makes me feel good too, right? So, and uh, yeah, it's just cool. And I get some followers as well. Um, how was your parents growing up and what did they think seeing you make all this money? I sort of answered a little bit about that, but I'm um, growing up, dude. Um, I got like, I think I had a pretty much average like whatever other people had i would have we never broke or anything not poor either but we we didn't have like a lot of money we, we didn't have a lot of money but we were able to go on some vacations do like basic stuff pretty basic at least over here in europe like an average family completely normal nothing nothing more nothing less um but that's the money aspect growing up dude i don't know i'm not that good at doing podcasts yet but i'll maybe i'll do one of my whole life story i guess but i don't know it's probably nothing crazy, I guess. Um, but when I started making it, like I told you earlier, just got more and more, so you sort of get used to it. But they're happy, though. They're proud. And especially when I bought the cars, the the M4 and the i8. The i8 I'm actually debating on selling. It's not a cool car at all. The only cool, the only cool thing about the i8 is probably the design. Uh, me personally, the design isn't that crazy. It's cool. But it's nothing insane. But I, the seller actually said that I8 gets more attention than his Lamborghini and he has a SV Lamborghini, which is strange. I don't know if that's the truth, but he said it. He probably just wanted to make the sale. Um, I8 is cool for a lot of people, but I'll tell you, like having an M4, for example, is way more enjoyable. Um, it's a cool car. Um, I'm not selling it because I'm running out of money, but I just don't like it. Why would I have something I don't like, right? But I'm definitely keeping it a little bit more. It's kind of cool and... Yeah, having it a little more weird to just sell it already. But I'm definitely going to sell it in a, in a year or something. It's not really my car. It's not really my style. And honestly, I don't, I don't think it's that cool either. I don't like it too much. So I would just have it for other people. And I don't want that. I don't really care. And I don't need to look cool either. I already am cool. Or am I? I don't know. <laughs> a lot of people just get stuck trying to get a good mindset. Just reading. Not reading, but watching videos about it. Um, when in th the truth is... You just need to go out and do it. It's just the truth. There's like no other no other answer to that. Just got to go out and do it. Um, as I said earlier, the discipline creates motivation. Um, when I started out, I didn't have money either. I just went for it. And I were, I started helping people a little bit, like in, you know, really basic stuff. Nothing. I didn't claim to be good at anything. Um, but let's say like I could help someone test a product and they could give me like $50. And I didn't know Facebook ads or anything, but I was just like, yo, if you need help testing, I can test a product with you. I can teach you how to test it. But I didn't I didn't bullshit anyone. I didn't teach them stuff that I was not qualified to do. But I knew how to test a product. So like, give me $50, we'll test a product. And then eventually we got into scaling. I was not good at that, but I was a little bit better. But they paid me $50 and made six figures. And that was when I realized, yo, Wow, I'm good at dropshipping. I'm really good at dropshipping. Because um, I have my own stores before as well. But they didn't work out. But I felt like I was good because I had a lot of knowledge. And I was like, okay, let's get into my own dropshipping store. And it popped off like crazy. And that's what I did, actually. I, I help people test products because I knew how to test. And judging some products too because I've seen a lot. But that's about it. I made some money of that. Maybe like $50 to $100. Then I had two designer belts when I was younger. Sold both of the designer belts. And got into dropshipping got like $400. Then I helped someone test. I made another 50. And eventually I had like $800. I tested. I lost it all. 
went back to getting these people to help them test and stuff. And as I said, I wasn't faking anything. I was just, I knew how to test. That's all I know. I didn't help them with stuff I didn't know. Or I could help, but I didn't charge for that. But I were helping them test because I knew how to test the product. It's pretty basic though. So it's complete beginners, people I didn't know anything. So we're helping them with that. And I made some money of just a tiny, tiny bit, but enough to test. Lost everything and went back to finding these people again. Um, and then lost everything and went back. Search a hustle. Like the hustle was actually real. And right now I don't believe grinding is the way, but it could be in the beginning. But the hustle was insane that those days. Like the the place I would find them as well is I would go in Facebook groups and then I would help people out, and then there would be like thanks, and then I would say like message me if you need anything, message me if you need anything, and I had access to some people with little higher profile as well. So I learned a lot about dropshipping, um, a lot of basics, nothing advanced that I had to learn myself by wasting money. But I learned a lot of basics from other people. And then I was just commenting in groups. They would be like, thank you so much. Like, hey, how do I test a product? Whatever. Does my store look good? And I said like, yo, your store is pretty good, but you could change. Let's say you could change the homepage a little bit, make this clear and take this away. And they'd be like, thanks. And then I'll just say like, yo, no problem. Message me if you need anything. Funny enough, they would all message me. So just talk with them a little bit. And then eventually I wouldn't really ask them for anything regarding paying me. But they would just say like, yo, can you help me out a little bit? I will just like, yeah, I can help you test a product or something. How much do you want for it? $50, $100, stuff like that. Eventually got one for 300 actually, uh, two times. Um, but that was what I did. Just help people out in Facebook groups. They would be thankful and then just say, message me if you need anything. And my DM box when I woke up was full. There's a lot of deals there, a lot of small deals. And I was doing some making some logos and stuff too. That's how I made my first money. Um, that's actually how I made my first money online. Or I made a couple of sales and dropshipping before, but nothing really popped off. But I definitely had a skill, that's for sure. And then now I obviously don't do that. I run my own stores and I manage other people's stores. Like none of you guys watching, but like bigger stores. Um, some brands and stuff and then I run my own as I said and hopefully I'll make some money of YouTube eventually I do a little bit like 400 a month which is nothing but it's super cool I'll 400 a month is way cooler of YouTube it's way cooler than 50 or 100 or 200 or 300 from dropshipping because it's from YouTube it's just so so cool that you can make some money of YouTube and hopefully it's gonna increase a little I don't know like I really would like to trans transfer into like you know YouTube eventually but that's got to go over my dropshipping earnings. And my dropshipping earnings is really high. So it will definitely take some time for YouTube to bypass that. But I find them both enjoyable. Dropshipping is super cool. But I find YouTube a tiny bit cooler. Just a tiny bit cooler. Like if I could get to the point where Gary Vee is at or something would be crazy. It's like 10 years down the line. It's just so cool. Turning on the camera. Rambling for like 10 minutes. And everyone everyone likes you. Everyone will engage with it. And people watch it constantly. Being all over the place, you know. Um, but as for now, I do one dropshipping channel. And then I do this podcast here. And some other general videos on this channel. Um, so make sure to subscribe if you're not. And press a like on the video. The first podcast is probably not going to be too long. Because it's my first time, right? I'm not an expert at doing a podcast. And people didn't really send in any questions either. So I'd obviously be thankful if any of you guys watching. Um, would be putting in like a question in the chat or something. That would be really nice. Um, let's see if we have any more questions. I don't think we have. I'll have to make these up myself at this point. We have a lot of questions, but they really, they're really not related to what I'm trying to talk about here. But maybe I got some in the inbox. Um, you're getting a lot of weird questions. Like there was a guy a couple of days ago and this guy um, said, and this is the wrong way of going about it. But this guy said to me like, um, yo, how much money you make from dropshipping or how much money you make? The tax records are public. No need to bullshit. And it was like, um, first of all, he didn't check my tax record. So he doesn't know anything about it because he didn't check it. He said it himself. He said it himself later. But he just he just thought that I was bullshitting or something. Or he just thinks everything is fake. Like people really think everything is fake, which is stupid. You'll not get anywhere. Or just a hater, basically, I would say. Just a hater. And which I don't care about that. But then I actually answered him and I was like, yo, what's up, bro? And I was nice to him. Like I was giving him some advice and stuff. And then it just straight up transition. Like, sorry if I talk to you the wrong way. Sorry that I started a conversation like this. And I'm like, okay, that is fine, bro. But yeah, you started it wrong. And then it was just like, yo, can we get on Discord? Can I call you on Discord tomorrow? Like get some help with dropshipping? And I was like, bro, you started off the conversation saying what, how much money you make. No need to bullshit. You're lying. Uh, or he didn't say I'm lying, but he, that was sort of what he was referring to, right? And then just like one minute later, can we get on Discord call, man? Thank you so much. Please help me out with dropshipping. Like, what? Are you for real, dude? Like that is not the way to go. And I have a lot of stories about the DMs as well. There was another guy as well just telling me what to do, like, 
uh, yo, you said you, you said you're taking on a student, but you don't answer me. And I'm like, yeah, maybe because I don't work with you, maybe because you're disrespecting me. And then talking about how I was going to run my business. Yo, you're taking on the student now, which I, I right now I don't take on any. I, I have full booked for December, but uh, I told him this earlier today as well. And he still says like, take me on. But like, yo, you're taking on students, but you don't, but you don't reply him to me. That doesn't mean I don't take on any. That means I'm probably not interested in working with him because he was just rude to me. He was not too nice to me in the beginning. So why would I ever take him on now? So really funny, um, a lot of weird stories from the DM box. But that is the first podcast episode, guys. Um, next one, I'm going to try to push everyone to an hour. But for now, I'm not too experienced. Next one will most likely be an hour, though. I'll prepare a little bit better, get maybe way more questions. But I appreciate all of you guys for watching. Make sure you subscribe and like or something. And you'll see me later. And my other channel is called Ecom Boss. Um, I'll link that in the description. That's more for dropshipping if you want to learn that. So appreciate you guys watching. Um, hopefully have a great time. And if you stick to the end, you're a legend. Let me know if you stick to the end. I appreciate you guys so much. Okay? You can be whatever you want to be. And, uh, and I believe in everyone. Peace.